Welcome back to the Crypto Bot Channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is still playing out this warning signal as well as playing out this short term bearish divergence and rejecting from key resistance. But right now, the price is running into critical short term support as well as forming a new pattern which can set up a new price targets. So, I'll be talking about all of that and more later in the video and some massive news in just a moment. So, definitely watch this video from start to finish to not miss out on any of this important information. First of all, just giving you a quick recap on yesterday's Fed meeting, also known as the FOMC meeting. And of course, the Federal Reserve decided to keep interest rates at the same, so there was no change in interest rates, which was the expected outcome. And so once again, as I explained in my last two videos here on the channel, that was the neutral outcome. So as soon as this news came out, of course, we didn't really see anything major in the market, no major volatility to either direction. But like I've also explained over the last few days, just after this interest rate decision, around half an hour after we had that Jerome Powell press conference. And in that press conference, we did see some things that acted on the market. And so once again, I kept you up to date in real time over on my Twitter. So if you want those real time updates throughout the day, as soon as this information is coming out, then make sure to follow me over on my Twitter link down below in the description and in the pinned comment. But basically, the main thing that came out of the Jerome Powell press conference, the Fed press conference, was essentially the fact that Jerome Powell said that yes, rate cuts are coming in 2024, but probably not in the March Fed meeting. And I added here that this is actually short term bearish because that means markets have to price out the March rate cut. And pretty much as soon as I tweeted this and the following hours after I tweeted this, we did end up seeing short term bearish price action exactly as expected. And once again, the reason behind that short term bearish price action was due to the fact that markets are having to price out the rate cut that was actually priced in or at least somewhat priced in for the March Fed meeting. And once again, as I've explained over the last few days, pretty much all you need to know is lower interest rates is bullish, higher interest rates is bearish. And basically what is already priced into the market, that is neutral because it's already priced into the market. And basically around two days ago before yesterday's Fed meeting, the probabilities for the March Fed meeting were close to 50-50, as in around half the market was expecting for a 25 basis point rate cut, and the other half of the market was expecting for interest rates to stay the same. But what we are now seeing after yesterday's Fed meeting is right now the market is pricing in around a 35% chance of that 25 basis point rate cut and around a 65% chance of no change in interest rates at the next Fed meeting in the March Fed meeting. And once again, lower interest rates bullish, higher interest rates bearish. So if the market is having to price out those lower interest rates and having to price back in the higher interest rate expectation for the next Fed meeting, that is short term bearish as the market is making that price adjustment. And as you can see here, once again, the market has not fully priced out that rate cut at the March Fed meeting, which means if we do not end up seeing that rate cut at the next Fed meeting, as Jerome Powell suggested, then once again, considering the fact that the market is expecting around a 35% chance of a rate cut at the next Fed meeting, if we don't end up seeing that rate cut, that would be even more bearish considering a lot of the market is still currently pricing that in. And if we're taking a look at the probabilities for future Fed meetings over the coming one year or so, once again, at the March Fed meeting, the next Fed meeting from now, the most likely outcome as of right now that's being priced into the market is no change in interest rates. And then the most likely outcome for the Fed meeting after that in May is an interest rate cut by 25 basis points. And so, for example, between now and then, if Jerome Powell or other Fed members begin to say that no interest rate cuts are happening until at least June, for example, then if the market it has to price out that interest rate cut. Once again, that can lead to more bearish price action. But on the other hand, if the Federal Reserve is hinting at more interest rate cuts or interest rate cuts sooner, then that can lead to a bullish price action as people are pricing in lower interest rates than previously expected. And so once again, the Federal Reserve rate decision was neutral for the market because everyone was already expecting that. But based on what Jerome Powell said in the press conference, this was slightly short term bearish. And now getting into some Bitcoin ETF news today, just yesterday, Grayscale sent another around 8,000 Bitcoin worth around 350 million US dollars over towards Coinbase to dump on the market. But for as long as this amount stays under 10,000 Bitcoin each weekday, honestly, it's not too bad considering around a week or two weeks ago, they were selling closer to 15 to 20,000 Bitcoin each weekday. And so once again, if this is underneath 10,000 Bitcoin each weekday coming out of Grayscale being dumped on the market, then that amount can pretty easily be absorbed by other ETFs. And as of right now, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is still holding just underneath 500,000 Bitcoin, still worth over 20 billion US dollars. 
But once again, for as long as they're selling less than 10,000 Bitcoin each weekday, it's not too bad, especially because BlackRock, one of the biggest buyers in the market right now, is buying a lot more Bitcoin each weekday. And of course, this is simply due to the fact that the demand for Grayscale Spot Bitcoin ETF is continuing to grow. A lot of people are buying into the ETF, which means BlackRock is having to buy Bitcoin to back the ETF. And as of right now, BlackRock is currently holding around 66,200 Bitcoin worth around 2.8 billion US dollars for their Spot Bitcoin ETF, as we can actually see on BlackRock's own website. And so this means over the last two days, just in the last 48 hours, BlackRock alone has accumulated over nine and a half thousand Bitcoin worth around 400 million US dollars. They have bought that amount of Bitcoin to back their ETF just in the last two days. And this buying pressure from BlackRock has been relatively consistent each weekday. And so if this continues, obviously this can quickly add up to a lot of Bitcoin being owned by BlackRock. And keep in mind, right now, only around 900 Bitcoin is actually mined each day and added into the Bitcoin supply. And after the Bitcoin halving in April, only around 450 Bitcoin will be mined each day. And so, for example, if BlackRock is still accumulating around four to 5,000 Bitcoin every single day, after the halving, if there's only 450 Bitcoin being mined per day, obviously, it does not take a genius to figure out that this is extremely bullish for Bitcoin over the longer term. But obviously, that's talking about the much longer term, talking about one to two years from now. If we're looking at slightly smaller time frames, of course, we can still see short term pullbacks and things like that. And so getting into the Bitcoin charts today, looking at the daily Bitcoin chart. And as of right now on the daily time frame, technically this bearish divergence is still currently active. And so once again, this simply means we should not really be expecting a significant amount of bullish momentum, at least in the short term. And instead, we're most likely going to see either a pullback or some choppy sideways price action as the most likely outcomes from this bearish divergence. And if we're looking at the daily Bitcoin MACD, right now this is showing a very low momentum. Over the last one week or so, it was showing more bullish momentum, but at the moment it's showing less momentum really to either direction. And so I would not be surprised if we do end up seeing a bit more of a consolidation here on the daily timeframe, potentially over the coming days or weeks. And as for support, we still have this area of support in between around 37.9K to 38 and a half thousand. And so even if we pull all the way back down towards that level, obviously we could still consolidate sideways like that on the daily time frame in that scenario. And staying on the daily time frame, looking at the DXY, also known as the US dollar index, as of right now, this is actually slightly heading back to the upside again after around a week of sideways consolidation. And so once again, as I always say, if the DXY is bullish, that is usually big bearish for Bitcoin and crypto. And so with the DXY heading a little bit higher, of course, if this continues, once again, that's simply another bearish signal, at least in the short term for the time being for the price of Bitcoin. And if we're taking a look at the six hour Bitcoin charts, of course, over the last few days or so, we did end up seeing the six hour Bitcoin RSI enter into overbought territories. And as I've said, over the last few days on the eight hour time frame and on smaller time frames, of course, with the RSI entering into overbought territories, that means we have limited room to the upside and we do to see a short term cool off, which usually plays out in the form of bearish price action or neutral price action, because both bearish price action and neutral price action can help reset the RSI. RSI back to the downside. And so if we're taking a look at the two hour Bitcoin chart, we can actually see the price of Bitcoin running into this area of support, which was a previous resistance. And this is sitting in between around 41.7K to around 42.2K. And obviously this is happening after another pretty much perfect rejection from this area of resistance, which is sitting in between around 43.3K to around 43.6K approximately. And obviously with higher highs in the price of Bitcoin and lower highs in the RSI, we also have that bearish divergence still playing out, which I've talked about recently on the channel. And obviously we have now seen that as expected, a bit of short-term bearish price action from this resistance. But once again, right now we're running into this area of support. So it's possible we could see some sort of bounce or consolidation consolidation around this area of support. And now if we do end up holding above this area of support for as long as we stay above around 41.6 to 41.7k and we form some sort of higher low above these previous lows, then in that case, we could potentially be forming an inverse hand and shoulders pattern here on the four hour Bitcoin chart. Because as of right now, we already have a left shoulder and a head. And right now we are potentially forming a right shoulder for this inverse hand and shoulders pattern. And now it's important to understand that right now, even though this pattern is potentially forming, it's just something to watch out for and not something to act on because it is not yet confirmed. 
and this pattern will only actually confirm if we see a bounce sometime soon, potentially over the next few days, back up towards this neckline, back up towards this line of resistance, which is sitting at around 43.6K, give or take. And then at that point, if we see that bounce back up towards that neckline and then confirm a breakout above 43.6K, that is the point where we could flip much more bullish again. Because if we end up seeing a move like that and then breaking out above 43.6K, that would confirm the inverse head and shoulders pattern, which will confirm a bullish price target. And in case you're wondering what that price target is, just measuring out that potential price target for this inverse head and shoulders pattern, if we see that successful breakout, that would set up a bullish price target at around 40 38.8k. And so from the point of the breakout to that price target, we're talking around a 12% move to the upside in the price of Bitcoin if we first confirm a breakout above this resistance. But once again, as of right now, that potential bullish price target for this potential inverse head and shoulders pattern is not yet confirmed and not yet in play. And so at least as of right now, while this pattern is forming, it is just something to pay attention to. And personally, I will only enter a breakout long position if we actually confirm a breakout above this line of resistance after completing that right shoulder, which as of right now has not happened. And if you're wondering where I take those trades in the price of Bitcoin and any other crypto, personally, I take those trades over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account and deposit on that account, you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there is also Bitflex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitflex. And so I will also make sure to leave a link to Bitflex in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link and deposit $100 worth of crypto or more and to make one trade over on Bitflex, then you can get 10 USDT completely for free along with other new deposit bonuses. And so if you're trading crypto anyway, or if you're preparing to take the next trade, you might as well get set up or ready to go on one of those exchanges using those links down below this video if you want to get those extra bonuses. But anyway, getting back into the Bitcoin charts, if we fail to complete that right shoulder and instead we actually break below this area of support here on the two hour time frame, then obviously that would be a short term bearish signal if we actually break back below around 41.6k to 41.7k with candle closes back below that level. And so in that scenario, if we confirm a break to the downside below this support, then in that case, looking at the Bitcoin Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we do actually have some short term price targets to the downside if we first break below that level of support. And first of all, we do have some initial liquidity, which we could still hit around that area of support sitting in between around 41.6K to 41.7K. So once again, we could see a slight dip down towards that liquidity and still stay in that area of support. But if we break further to the downside, then a potential price target to the downside would be starting at around 39.7 to 39.8K with a lot more liquidity sitting at around 39.4K to 39.5K. And so basically, I would expect a drop down towards around 39,500 to 40,000 in that price range right there if we first confirm a break back below this support, which as of right now has not yet happened. And so like I've been saying here on the channel almost every day since all the way back here, I've been saying that while the price of Bitcoin is in between this support and this resistance, at the moment, just in the short term, we're looking relatively neutral, basically chopping around sideways. And we only really set up the next major price target once we first confirm either a break below this support or above this resistance. And as traders, it does not matter what direction the price goes, whether we're breaking support or resistance. Of course, we can use long positions or short positions to profit no matter what direction the price goes. And so this is why it's definitely worth setting up ready to go on one of those exchanges using those links down below this video if you want to get those extra bonuses so that you're ready to take these trades as soon as they happen. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this is on the daily time frame, and right now the bearish divergence is technically still active. And so like I've been saying almost every day since all the way back here, this simply means we should not be expecting any significant bullish momentum, at least in the short term. And instead, we're most likely going to see either a pullback or some choppy sideways price action as the most likely outcomes. And if we're looking at the daily Ethereum MACD, obviously around two weeks ago, as I said on the channel two weeks ago, this was looking very bearish, showing a lot of bearish momentum. But over the last one week or so, we've been seeing declining bearish momentum in the MACD, which means as of right now, we don't really have a lot of momentum to either direction. And so this is why on the daily time frame, we're just seeing these slight moves up and down and not really a strong move to either direction, because once again, right now, we're lacking momentum. 
And if we're taking a look at the short term, looking at the four hour time frame, obviously the price is continuing that short term cool off from the local high from when the RSI entered into overbought territories, which I warned about here on the channel. But at least as of right now, this short term bullish relief might not be over, at least until we confirm a break below this previous low, setting a new lower low in place. And that previous low, by the way, is sitting at around 2230 to 2240. And as for the short-term fractal that's been playing out over the last one week or so, very nicely as expected, as I've been talking about since all the way back down here, of course, we have seen that bullish relief over the last one week, but this time around, the RSI entered into overbought territories a lot sooner compared to last time. And so with the RSI entering into overbought territories, once again, that meant we were due to see a bit of a break or setback from that bullish relief. But technically, we only form a new short-term bearish trend once we confirm a lower low or lower high in place, similar to what we saw back here. Once we confirmed some lower highs in place and lower lows, of course, at that point, that is where I flipped more bearish again in the short term on the trend. And so as of right now, considering we have not yet broken this higher low, higher high price structure, at least for now, we have not yet reversed back in the bearish direction. But if we're taking a look at the two hour ETH to US dollar chart, this short term bullish divergence is now invalid because we have now seen a new lower low in place here in the two hour Ethereum RSI. And so as you can see right here, this has played out pretty much perfectly over the last one week or so in the form of mostly a bullish relief and some choppy sideways price action, which is usually the most common outcomes from a bullish divergence. But once again, it's worth mentioning that right now, this short term bullish divergence just on the two hour time frame is now invalidated. And so at least in the immediate short term, like I said, on the daily time frame as well, we're simply lacking momentum. So once again, I would not necessarily expect a massive move to either direction. And instead, we're most likely going to basically chop around sideways, at least in the imminent short term. And that's kind of what Solana has been doing here on the eight hour time frame. Obviously, for the last multiple weeks, we've basically been within this sideways price range. And as for support and resistance, right now we're bouncing from this level of support, which is sitting at around $91 to $92. But if we break back below that level, we also have this golden pocket area of support in between around $83.50 to $85.50. And as for short-term resistance, we have found some resistance at around $104. We also have more resistance at around $108 and more resistance closer towards around $115 to $116. But obviously, over the last couple of days, we have seen a short-term cool-off for the price of Solana as well, which is something that I've talked about over the last few days, because the 8-hour Solana RSI obviously entered into overbought territories, as you can see right here. And so it's very normal to expect these pullbacks or resets in the price and the RSI after entering into overbought territories. But this is actually happening at a very good time because we're potentially forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern here for the price of Solana as well. Because as you can see here, we're potentially forming a left shoulder ahead. And right now we're potentially forming a right shoulder, but we need to see a bounce sometime soon over the next few days back up towards around $105 to $106. And then of course, we will need to see a confirmed breakout back above this high right here so back above around $106 in order to confirm that inverse hundred dollars pattern and confirm a bullish price target but once again as of right now that potential inverse hundred dollars pattern even though it's potentially forming it is not yet completed or confirmed but if you want to know how you can profit from crypto no matter what direction the price is going whether we're bullish or bearish or chopping around sideways you can profit in all of those scenarios by watching these videos popping up right here on your screen the video in the top left shows you how you can open long positions and short positions to profit if the price is bullish or bearish and the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action but anyway that is everything that i have to say for today i really hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next video